Hey everybody, so welcome to the second episode of this year's Knowledge Graph Technology Showcase, where we go through some of the new and cool tools and services out there in the Knowledge Graph space, and you get to try them out and not have to talk to the salespeople all the time. So make sure you stay till the end because there is a summary slide if you are really considering this as a tool that you wanna go and try out for yourself. So today we are talking about Graphilion. And what it's going to do is when you are building out your models or your pipeline architectures, it's writing the code behind the scenes for you. So it is very much a low to no code kind of application so that you can start to develop more knowledge graph applications without necessarily having to know a whole lot about the underlying queries and data structures of those knowledge graphs. So if this sounds interesting to you, keep on watching. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Ashley, for uh, for uh, uh, offering the opportunity to talk to you. Mm -hmm. So I, I like modeling and I like to, but I also, <laughs> since I'm not an IT guy myself, I do I do not code. Mm -hmm. uh, I want I need tools to 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 help me manage graph and to build applications. So that's mm -hmm. actually where where we started. So and that's what we currently do: a tool that allows you to access a multitude of graph. Basically, well, what we want to be is the second product that people gets when they start using graph databases. First, they start the graph database, and then they need some tool on top of it that allows you to really quickly build applications. All right, so Tom, this this sounds fascinating. We've, we've, we've covered a lot of different uh, graph databases on this channel. And one thing that can sometimes be lacking with them is an interface to do things with, um, to actually develop applications and connecting outside applications to yeah. to those graph stores so it sounds like you're kind of in in that space we have seen applications that go from from master data management to mm -hmm. fintech to uh, agricultural research to project management mm -hmm. um, utility networks uh, mm -hmm. i'm living here in a, in a very water scarce country jordan mm -hmm. so if you want to analyze where your water where you lose water or if you want to uh, analyze to to analyze in which part of your water network you need to build any redundancy, because for instance there is an hospital nearby, or if you want to uh, uh, be able to quickly isolate contamination. So for mm -hmm. those cases, graph is a very good tool because mm -hmm. applying all the graph algorithms, you see where the vulnerabilities in your water network are. Where does your product sit in the grand scheme of of these things? Is it actually helping to develop the graph or does the graph already have to exist and then this is sitting on top of it? Well, you can do both. Basically, what we consider ourselves as an application development framework. Sometimes, of course, that depends on, on it depends on the graph database, whether the graph has to be uh, existing already, because you have graph databases that are, let's say, that receive streaming data. <laughs> and then at the same time, you know, your Graphelion, uh, you can access Graphelion, uh, with Graphelion, you can access the, the data directly. But you can mm -hmm. also manage uh, uh, manage your graph content yourself. But that's mm -hmm. more, of course, for less data intensive applications. If you want to be a knowledge graph, if you want to be build a documentation or something, you know, they can, can, can link your pages to your page. That is something manual. But mm -hmm. of course, as, as uh, let's say, as we get more involved into um, uh, applications that have a lot more data, for instance, currently we are talking to a prospect who is in right hailing. That's a lot of data, you know, and delivery and 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 that kind of stuff. Yeah. Here we have Graphilion. Uh, let's say the first thing that that way back what we try to do is to okay, how do I create how do I create data without writing Cipher or Sparkle or Gremlin? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you can spin up a blank. Uh, a blank page, which is basically your canvas, and you can say, okay, I have uh, an entity of uh, of type person, and which whose name is Ashley. No, Ashley, and uh, okay, you can create that person. And uh, if I clone her and make her male, oh, and then okay, you can create two person, and you can, of course, 
we have a relationship nodes, and then at, since it is a label property graph, you can send here your uh, set your properties on mm -hmm. uh, on it. So this is basically your uh, your knowledge your, your graph. This is manually graph building, mm -hmm. and uh, if you would have a lot of uh, a lot of of neighbors, uh, not this is not the case now. We've built in some things that that we thought would be handy. So if you would start with a single person, you get here on the side, you get your your mm -hmm. uh, your controlled way of 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 uh, exploring. You know, imagine that. Well, you know, I know you know a lot of people. So if I would double click on Ashley, I don't want it to explode in my face. Yeah. So mm -hmm. here I can say, okay, I can just uh, uh, gradually do it. Of course, I can also. Uh, I can also edit <coughs> edit uh, these things. Um, so that's uh, that's that's basically the graph. You said that so you are creating the label property graph here. Is it actually creating the data behind the scenes when you're drawing yes. on the canvas? It's, that's really no, nice. No, it's writing directly to in this case uh, Neo4j. Uh, I have here my Neo4j. And I'm not sure in which one I am uh, currently working. Oh yeah, okay. So I have here my DNA of OJ. I can go to my Graphelion and I can do match and return N. And there you have Ashley and Tom. I can, can I just stop you here for a second? Okay. A lot of folks don't maybe understand how important this is. I am a strong believer that without the visuals to show non-graph people what graph is, you have a very, very long battle ahead of you. Mm -hmm. What you just did is actually incredibly helpful from a buy-in perspective. If you need to sit down with your data engineers and walk through how do you model and graph, this allows you to do that with them and then they can see it in the code right away without having mm -hmm. to teach them how to do everything in graph. I think this is this is fabulous yeah. for getting that buy-in. Our tagline is your path to graphs. Mm -hmm. We want we that was the that's our mission, you know, to to make graph accessible to people who are not necessarily developers. And uh, let's say this is only uh, uh, let's say two nodes, but if I go um okay now that's that's completely the, then i'm going to the next stage but um i will show you more examples of this how this yeah, how this actually great. can be very helpful the same you know when it when it applies to let's say the nodes that i've visited yeah or mm -hmm. uh the, the 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 queries that i've run you know we have all that information that is that is available here on the left side on the right side yes. yeah and where are those so you, coming from is yeah. that directly tying into no. neo uh, no, they, they we store them at at uh, uh, here on 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 our client. Well, oh, they are stored also. But it's, so if I run it from here, yeah, I have a run eleven. Then here you see it pop it up. Yeah. I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As you can cool. see, by the way, we have all kinds of styling depending on properties, or you can use any label or property uh, to uh, um, let's say to style the notes. Or the mm -hmm. or the edges. First of all, we have let's say this is Graphelion is not just about managing data as a graph. Mm -hmm. and the, the the one of the important things is that in our view, applications are graphs as well. So you could you could say you have a query, <coughs> and then it outputs the data to a grid or to a chart or to a map. So you could also uh, model that as a graph. And and let me give you some very uh, small examples of that, and they are coming from the app library that did, that we created to to help people understand how you can also visually, let's say, model model app library. And this one comes online. So let that it starts with a very small hello world application. Mm -hmm. You have here, okay, you can preview the logic, and then basically what it says, okay, here I have a hello world, which is a dashboard. And it mm -hmm. has a shortcut. If I click on it, it displays my first HTML page. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I would, I can I can install it. So here we have a number of dashboards. So if I install this, then I see here my Hello World application. Mm -hmm. And then when I click it, I have my Hello World. 
Yeah, so this is the very simple application that that mm. that we have. So here you have the the uh, the application, and this is my dashboard, and it's part of the same app. Mm. So this is something very simple. Now <coughs> we are uh, currently working on something, and that would be the next step for us. Yeah, we we want to make it still a lot more easy. You know, if you if you want to build an application, and we have many types of functions, not just the dashboards or the HTML views. We mm -hmm. have, if I start with a blank application, so I have here a button that says add function. Mm -hmm. Now, here you can see all the functions that we have. Now, this is something that we haven't shown to anyone yet. So this is really very, very new. It's It will be in my, one of our next versions. It's still in beta. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine if you have, Okay, you have a query. You start up that query, and it gives you, <coughs> and it gives you some some properties. You know, I'm just playing here with the default query. Now I'm going to add that one to the canvas. So here I have my query, and imagine I want to visualize the result of that query in, for instance, a network view. Okay, here I have my network view with a number of properties when you can switch the layout or the zoom to fit status and whatever. So I'm going to add that one to the to the graph as well. Now, if I want to connect that query, I just draw the line and it says me, it, it defines based on the start and the end of this function, it defines me, uh, it, it, it suggests me a number of properties. So I'm going to run it. Until now, I haven't written a single line of code. You know, I, I just, been pointing and clicking. OK, imagine if I also want to output that same data from the query to another one, to a grid. Let's have a grid here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to add that one. And here, when I draw this line, it comes up with different property that correspond to the pattern from a query to a grid. Yeah, not mm -hmm. a query to a, to a graph. OK, now. And I want to I want to add this one here. I have a number of shortcuts on my dashboard. Which are mm -hmm. basically, you know, your 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 quick uh, your quick access. Now I'm going to give it a name because then I can easily detect it. Name, okay. Ashley, Ashley one, okay. I'm going to add it. And now when I when I uh, have here an option, create shortcut. Mm -hmm. When I do this, it will refresh the screen, and you will see that afterwards here in this. A set of shortcuts there will be a new shortcut and when i click that shortcut it executes this query and outputs it to the table view and the network view. okay there it is here i have my ashley one mm -hmm. and when i spin it up so here you have your output oh sorry your output to your network view and also to the grid view to the grid view the table view get another example of the app library to make it <laughs> a little bit uh, more um uh, an illustration of, of what we can do. For instance, the, uh, the 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 API to get data from somewhere someone else. Yeah, in this case, just a simple weather service. Yeah, I can preview the lo the logic again. Okay, so here you have it will create another dashboard, uh, and it uh, when the dashboard it iterates through a number of of uh, 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 cities. I think you have Amman, Bucharest, uh, Izmir, it's a little bit the cities where we are. And it loops through this uh, this request and there is some progress thing that tells you what to do. So you, you did mention early in the conversation that you know there are other types of graphs. So, so far I've seen a lot of heavy use of Cypher and NeoForj, which again, amazing tools. But what would I be able to do if I was using RDF? OK, with RDF, we have uh, currently we support uh, uh, Cambridge semantics. <laughs> we are we are looking the so that's Anzo graph. Mm -hmm. uh, we are also looking at uh, a graph DB from onto text. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we can never go beyond the limitations of what a certain data data sure. modeling paradigm is. Mm -hmm. So for instance, uh, uh, you know, you have to go especially if you have multiple edges between the same nodes mm -hmm. in RDF, 
very often you have some, to do something in between because yeah. uh, let's say that um, if you would like the, 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 the subject predicate object, it's defined by, by the three of them. So you cannot easily uh, do that. So there are limitations, of course, and also, yep. uh, um, but uh, you can, for instance, you can run your graphication, your, the, one part of the application. So the one that connects the Graphelion functions, you can run that on a labeled property graph and then use your data, do you run your query against uh, your where your business data is, you can use any other store. So we mm -hmm. are not limited <laughs> for one Graphelion instance. You can basically, uh, let's say the, 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 the personal edition limits two or three, but in our paid editions, you can have an unlimited number of graph stores connected to it. Yeah, no, that's that's great to know. So it, it does apply to a, a large majority of the network of people using graph. But some of those apps mm -hmm. that you were showing there, there, it looked like there were static fields for Cypher. So if I was using an RDF triple store behind the scenes, would that still say Cypher? Mm -hmm. Would I have to use both? How does that work? Yeah, OK, let me OK, let me first run this one and that would then it will uh, I will show you something that isn't depending on any database at all. So this was the iterate. So here you have a button that says city temperature. And when it fires, it gets me from oh. weatherapi.com, it gets me data. This one it doesn't require any query statement. So in the back end, we translate any CRUD operation or to Cypher or to Gremlin or to Sparkle. So this can run on any on any graph store that we support. But it's again a little bit more elaborate, but we have mm -hmm. our data management functions that have gets, creates, updates, and deletes. So this this does not require any cipher at all. So I see that in your um, app store, so to speak, you had a lot of the core features that you would need to, you know, basically build out your entire data pipeline for this. Um, what if somebody had something mm -hmm. that was unique? Is there a way to add a custom utility in here, or is it only the presets that you have? No, it's and that's definitely something that on our roadmap, but we are, let's say, as we are a small company, we can only uh, uh, move at a certain speed. But sometimes we do for our for our, our, our users, you know, sometimes they need really customized stuff, and which I call the Harry Potter Lego, you know? You have your, your, your specific thing, but as long as it, as it as it fits on that in that model you can connect everything so mm -hmm. that's also how we built out our library of functions currently mm -hmm. we have between 40 and 50 and each user oh. of course some users uh, yeah sometime at a certain moment for instance we wanted we needed to integrate uh <coughs> we need to integrate the chart gs function because mm -hmm. we were talking to a customer who, although they are running, they are running on premise, but they were not allowed to go on the internet to use Google services. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's you have to have some local library. So Tom, if if you could follow us through to the end of the journey here, so you have built out, you've modeled, you've tested, you've installed these apps, you've you've curated it and updated it to your specifications. Now what? What do you do with this after you're happy with it? Well, let's say we see originally we were a little bit in the space of prototyping and proof of concept. Mm. But what we actually see is that people just continue using the applications. And so they manage graph data, their data, their, their graph database, let's say the business data becomes richer. And then they access it also with other applications. Graphelion does is not necessarily the only application that interacts with that graph. Mm -hmm. We see that our partners sometimes, they build configurations that they want to share with other customers. What they can do is they can, uh, we have we have a runtime license, so that, mm -hmm. that allows you to run applications, but not adapt applications. Mm -hmm. um, well, we good. also, if I would, uh, let's say, if I would run uh, an, an, applic an application, we also can export the application mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. Cypher. So mm -hmm. if you can export it as Cypher, so you can rerun it. So it, it creates the function, it creates everything you see now on your screen. So nice. you can recreate that applications, but you can also do it in JSON. What is important if you have, you don't want to mix up your application graph as we call it. So the Graphelion function, you don't want to mix that with your business data because that can of course, 
uh, create all kinds of problems when you do algorithms and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So what we separated is um, is what we call the application store, which is the store where you store your your graffitians, and mm -hmm. you have all kinds of other stores which are business data. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then your application store is not gonna. <coughs> going to contaminate your business data. Summarize it. It does seem like you're like a stream sets ish kind of thing, but for specific graph applications, uh, which that pattern makes a lot of sense. A lot of people love being able to visually create something and then use it and implement it afterwards. So Tom, if somebody wants to get a hold of you or find out more about Graphilion, how would they go about doing that? Of course, they can go to our website. They can. Uh, there is a, a form there, but you know we are on the first name basis. So Tom at Garfilion dot com would uh, would end up in my email box. Yeah. So that would probably be, uh, be the best case, and we would love to uh, to take people not just to let's say through the capabilities of what we can do, but also look into their use cases.